on to the one that I think you'll love, though, is the Jura Tide 21 years old, bottled at 46.7%. So we're getting up there and proof. Comes in this awesome, uh, what do you call it, like smoked glass bottle? or Yeah, it's like a it's like like semi an o- like opaque. An opaque. Yeah, like a frosted. Yeah, frosted. That's the that's the word for it. And it comes in a cool box. Oh, it's got the box. So we know you bought it. Yep. Now here's their this little. Is, this has got to be impressive though, because yeah. I've had Jura, and I actually kind of like some of the Jura stuff. Yeah. So I, when I went to Isla, I got to see Jura because Jura is like maybe a thousand feet away from Isla, across like this little channel of water. Um, but the ferry, we got there just after the last little ferry went. So we didn't get to go over to Jura. But Jura's population is like 200 people or is something. Is this the only it, distillery on that? Yes. Okay. In fact, so, I, I think it's probably the only business <laughs> So do Jura. They, do they count it as I mean, an Isla whiskey or is it its own category? No, it's its own. It's oh, an okay. island whiskey. Okay. But yeah, it's um, there's only 200 people on the island with one pub, one distillery. So but you know what you're drinking. Yeah. <laughs> if you go there, this is this is it. Yep. Now, here here's their little their little thing about this whiskey. In the vast wilderness of our island home. It's easy to lose track of time, but if you stop a moment in that beautiful wilderness and listen to the silence, the only sound to be heard soon helps you find it once more. The tide. Now, I don't think you can hear the tide. <laughs> You can, you hear, can the, hear the waves, the, the waves, the but you probably ocean. can't hear the tide. But I'm not sure what the strict scientific definition of tide is. But I think tide is like just the change in level of, or it's whatever the level of the water is at a given time. No, water just comes in or goes out now, based on gravitational. Power. Aha! Now I I find it interesting you bring that up because the water is not actually moving james well yeah so this this is a fun science fact that i learned recently is that the gravitational pull of the moon pulls the water out to the sides of the globe and then the the earth just rotates within like so the water doesn't actually the the level of the water isn't going up and down it's literally the earth is moving through the water and so the the point where the land is is either in deeper or shallower water, but the water isn't actually getting shallower or deeper. That's thank you for that. Why? Everybody is now much smarter <laughs> about tides. It's it'll kind of hurts your mind. Re- regardless, <laughs> you you probably can't hear it. Like I don't <laughs> care if the water's moving or the earth is moving, you probably can't yeah. hear it. But it sounds really nice on the back of the box. Yeah, I want you to open it up and try it. Okay, real quick. So. When when I discovered this fun this fact about the tides and how the Earth is actually just rotating within the ocean, basically, <laughs> like like the wa- the water's not going out and in; it's the Earth moving through it. It the the recommended video under that was a flat Earth thing, of course. <laughs> yeah, and the flat Earth guy he was on he was on the show and he's talking about how. Well, you know, everyone says we're hurtling through space at you know, Mach 1000, you know, or whatever. And if that was true, then how come I don't feel it? <laughs> like, he's like, there'd be no way that you couldn't feel that. And yeah. and I'm just like thinking to myself, I'm like, has this guy never like ridden in a car before? It's <laughs> you like, don't notice. You, unless you're accelerating or decelerating, you have no sense of speed. And... And his like his other argument was like he showed this picture of a lake with like still water, and he's like, how would this water be still? All this air, the air would be moving at least, or the water would be like swooshing to one side. <laughs> and he was specifically talking about because the Earth orbits in an ellipse, that when you get when you change direction in the ellipse, like all the water would like slosh over to one <laughs> side, It'd just all fall off the right hand side. And yeah, and the guy that's like on the show with him is like so. How long does it take the Earth to orbit the sun? You know, 365 days, right? I want you to go out in a parking lot and make a U-turn in three hundred and 180 days. <laughs> like, basically the equivalent <laughs> amount of time. Yeah. And he's like, and tell me if you... F- if the if cup of water it. is like sloshing <laughs> over, it, that's less than like a degree a day. That's a pretty good, uh, I like that. Like, that's a good suggestion. Yeah. He's like, you you would go walk in a circle. Right. 
but, but take 365 <laughs> days to do it and tell me if you feel yeah. the change of momentum. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You're, you're not even moving. Oh man. It's, it's good, just, it's good stuff. The flat earth thing, dude. I, it, it cracks me up <laughs> and makes me cry a little bit. I don't know bit. how this has anything to do with Jura, but like, you know. It's all about the tides, man. I will. Yeah, it's the tides and hearing the tides. I will say this, though. Now, this is this aged smells in virgin. Beautiful. Yeah. On the nose. So this is aged in virgin oak barrels. Oh. So it's, I it's, noticed it's noticeably darker. I don't know if they had coloring. Yeah, so it it's ex-bourbon and then finished in virgin American oak casks. So this so is they do like... the ex-bourbon first. Yep. Oh. And then fresh American oak. So this is like the most bourbony scotch, you know, or most bourbon-esque scotch I have. I absolutely love the nose. It's rich. It's got um, kind of a campfire note that I think carries over to the palate. But to me, it's just toasted. It's it toasted just, wood. Yeah. It's it not taste like peat. peat. No. But when you drink it, you still get that. It's a little bit of charred wood note. Yeah. I don't want to say barbecue-y, but like bonfire-y type of a smoke. And then it's just nice and sweet and bright. And it's got a lot of complexity to yeah. it. So I think... It's much sweeter than I was expecting. Yeah. I mean, when you when you put it double... American oak barrels on it. You're getting a lot of vanilla and a lot of, yeah. And I wonder what the reasoning here is here. Usually you see it the other way around, right? Put it in the heavy (laughs) char first, let it sit for a while. Then they'll finish it in another cask. Sometimes something that's Mm -hmm. used. So they flipped it here. I think it's because they wanted to age it for 20 years. They're not, I mean, you can't age it in a fresh American oak barrel for 20 years without getting way over oaked. Or it makes me wonder if it was just laying around. And they're well, like, yeah, this tastes really good, but we want to add a little bit of like yeah, ca- smoke I'm, character. I mean, obvi- they just dumped it in there. Yeah, that's the way they did it, obviously. But I'm just saying, like, if they wanted, they, I don't think they would produce it the alternate way of putting in fresh American oak for 20 years and then uh, is there ex- a bourbon barrel for one year. Is there any scotch that does that? That just sticks it in a brand new barrel and lets it sit for a long time? For a long time? Not that I know of. Because there's some that do it short periods of time, right? Yeah. And but most of them are ex bourbon casks that Still, they just let sit yep. forever. Yeah, not really because the so because the climate in Scotland's so cool, the aging process takes a long time. And so I think if you were to put it in a fresh charred barrel day one and leave it, um, I think you would just get too much of just like the plain woody flavor. And not enough of like the whiskey actually breathing in and out of the barrel and extracting some of those other flavors. See, I wonder if that's why it might be better though. I think one of my arguments with new char in a lot of places with especially like bourbon is it tends to extract because of that really distinct temperature fluctuations you get in areas, it pulls a lot out of the barrels very quickly. And so it's easy to over oak bourbon. Mm. You get above eight to 10 years and the number of barrels you start tasting that are overly oaky goes way up. I mean, just way up. And you wouldn't have that problem with scotch. So I wonder if it would almost age more elegantly in a new barrel than what bourbon and rye does. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I just, I can't think of any bur- uh, any scotch that's aged in a fresh American oak barrel longer than a couple of years. Let's call some people, Paul. <laughs> Let's get on this. Yeah. I want to see what it's going to taste like. Now, I will say there's some... American single malt. We're going to be trying one here at the end of April. There's some American single malt that do that. Um, But again, you have the same temperature fluctuations here as what you do with the bourbon and rye. And so I'm really curious about that consistent climate, what that would do, because you're going to, I think you're going to get less of the char. You're going to get less of those barrel notes out and it might just smooth out over time. I, I don't know. It might end up with a really pretty product. Yeah. I like this much better though than I did any of the peated offerings I've had from yeah. from Jura. Yeah, I, I, I want to go there though. I bet that island's gorgeous. Oh, it's really pretty. Yeah. The the so yeah. So I think do you, do you actually like this one? I You're, do. I don't know that I would go out of my way to get pours to get of it, it all the time. What's what's the cost on this? Two hundred bucks. Oh yeah, that's too much for me. Yeah. If it was a hundred bucks, I'd be all over it. Mm. If it was 150, but it's 21 be, years old. I get it, but I don't know. So to me, but it's, I, it's I think this is actually worth $200 from, from a scotch perspective. 
Um, because I can't think of another scotch where I get this amount of like caramel on the nose where I get, I mean, there's a little bit of like a coconut character to it that I don't love. I, I, I personally don't like coconut. Um, but then I mean, there's really also, sensitive to coconut. there's also just like this ginger kind of character to it. There's nice marzipan. Oh, the lovely marzipan. <laughs> this, this is just delicious. Like it's, it's really good. 